Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is about the 16th time I've tried recording this video today. The first time the recording didn't actually record and the second time everyone and their nan decided to go past on their motorbikes. But here we have the beast that is the ASUS ROG HD 7970 Matrix Platinum. There was a standard Matrix Edition 2 which looked identical to this one but that was clocked at 50 megahertz less. That's about the only difference. I won this card in an eBay auction and despite entering what I thought was a pretty low bid of £85 and expecting to be outbid at the last minute, well here we are. Back in 2012, this high-end GPU would have shipped with a Diablo 3 mousepad, crossfire connector, and an aluminium heatsink just in case any world record-seeking overclocking enthusiasts wanted to cool the card with liquid nitrogen. I love the obnoxious custom triple slot cooler. I had to take my motherboard out of my PC to test this thing, as not only was I worried about my 550 watt PSU refusing to power this behemoth, but the card didn't actually fit inside my case, or any PC cases that I own. The LED matrix load indicator is a nice touch, changing colours under different usage scenarios. When this thing goes red, you know it's time to take cover. The emergency 100% fan speed button isn't just here for show. The huge custom fans also ensure that the card never really exceeds 70 degrees when gaming, and that's what we should talk about next. As cool as this card is in both senses of the word, it still suffers from the inevitable advancement of technology that happens around it. DX12 games Games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Dirt 5 won't start, both claiming that a non-compatible graphics card is detected due to the lack of full DirectX 12 feature support. It's a shame because in some instances the 7970 Matrix Platinum offers up surprising results in even the newest of games. Take Days Gone here for example. Ok sure it's been available on PlayStation for a couple of years now, but the PC port that was released just last week or so, runs at close to 60 FPS at 1080p on this almost decade old flagship graphics card. If you want a closer to PlayStation 4 experience then you can even crank things up to the high preset and still retain at least 30 FPS. I definitely recommend this game, by the way it's a great game to just sit down and lose a few hours to every weekend. And there have certainly been a few moments that have made me jump. So as you can imagine, some games are better suited to 30 FPS with this thing. Cyberpunk 2077 for example will run at full HD but there will be occasional drops below this, especially in busier city areas. And because of that I'd recommend turning down the resolution scaling option to a static 85%. A lower percentage will mean a higher frame rate of course but going too low and you'll ruin the experience. 60 FPS is cool and everything but not if you can count the game's pixels on two hands. The latest Call of Duty will run at 60 FPS and thankfully we won't have to make any of the aforementioned changes to hit that target. Using the lowest settings as well as the high anti-aliasing option will be enough. Now you don't have to use high AA, but in the case of COD I find that anything lower doesn't really do a good job of dealing with jagged edges. The performance sacrifice isn't significant over opting for low AA, at least not in the case of this card, but it just looks way better. Whether you choose to target 30 with higher settings or 60 with low settings is entirely up to you, but the 7970 is definitely better suited to the former, at least with newer, more demanding AAA games. Slow paced third person titles like Days Gone and let's say Red Dead Redemption 2 feel fine at 30 FPS, at least to me, but I mean this is all about personal taste. And first person shooters in my opinion are best played with as many frames as possible. It's with that that we'll move on to Crisis Remastered. Now this looks really good even with the low preset and runs quite well too with over 60 frames per second on average, which I wasn't expecting. Now I always have SMAA enabled just to deal with those jagged edges, but that doesn't hinder the card's ability to keep things running smoothly most of the time. Once again, the large twin fans ensure that the card stays at a reasonable temperature as well, in this case not exceeding 65 degrees. When the action heats up, you can rest easy knowing that the graphics card doesn't. That sounds like it should be a slogan for a company, but I don't know if anyone has actually used that. 
I'll slap a copyright on that. <laughs> Onto the classic that is GTA 5 now and the 7970 Matrix Platinum will plough through this title with at least 60 FPS even with the very high settings. We do however have MSAA turned off as that will drop the average figure quite heavily. The advanced options are also off here. As per usual, I drove downtown with the intention to cause absolute carnage and things stayed smooth throughout my half hour or so with this title. As much as I like the 7970 Matrix Platinum and as thankful as I am that it still supports the very latest AMD drivers as of the 27th of May 2021, I can't help but think about the end that inevitably looms. There's only going to be more and more games that throw up that unsupported message as we go forward. Thankfully it's just a handful of games at the moment though and I can't help but think that they would actually run quite well. Valhalla and Dirt 5 would probably do okay if they actually started. The way the graphics card market still is at the moment means that cards like this can go for way more than they are actually worth but here is the thing. Look out for auction listings. Buy it now prices on sites like eBay will often be way higher than what you can expect to pay if you get lucky in an auction. Because the interest in older cards like like this is lower despite what some prices tell you. Anyone can list an old GPU for triple its actual worth, but the real value will always be determined by the outcome of the auction. Patience is always key. Having said that, I am still surprised that this didn't sell for more, but like I said, despite its once high-end status, it is, at the end of the day, a nine-year-old graphics card that will struggle in a handful of games and some of them it just won't start but as i said that is luckily just a handful at this point in time overall then the 7970 matrix platinum is a pretty cool car to own and someone else will soon get to enjoy it i've taken to keeping less and less cards that i buy for testing purposes because Holding GPUs at the moment just doesn't seem like the right thing to do when someone with a tighter budget could still get some enjoyment out of it. Me, I'll test it and then it will just sit on the shelf and gather dust which would certainly be, be a shame for an old beast like this. As for this video though, well I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of the 7970 Matrix Platinum. Let me know if you own one of these or you know anyone that does or perhaps you own the standard Matrix Edition. Do you still have it? Do you still play games with it? Do you own any other rare cards that may or may not have been featured on this channel subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already of course and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one